What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and I've already shown you a lot of awesome new features and changes in iOS 13, but I wanted to switch sides for a second and take a look at some of the things that Apple may have done wrong. So in this video, I wanna talk about some of the bad changes or the lack of changes really in iOS 13. Now these are gonna be things that could have made iOS 13 even better. Now just to be clear, I love iOS 13. I think it's a great software update, so this isn't a video hating on the software or anything like that. These are just some of the things that I've been thinking about after using iOS iOS 13 for a few days now. And the first one I want to talk about is one that I noticed very early on, and I don't think anybody likes this change, and that is inside of the App Store. You'll notice on the tabs at the bottom now, we no longer have the Updates tab. It has been replaced with the Arcade tab. So if you go and click on that, you can see it's literally just a placeholder until the Arcade subscription service comes out later this year. But why, Apple? Why would you put that there and replace the Updates tab? I mean, we already have a section for games down here. Why do we need two of the five tabs to be about games? The Updates tab was a very used section. I mean, I went to that a lot to see, you know, which applications needed updating, the change log for the update to that application. And now to get to updates, we have to go to our profile and then we swipe down and they're down here, which is, you know, not bad, but it took me a while to find where it actually got moved to. So I just think it was a terrible terrible move for Apple to remove the updates tab and replace it with literally another games tab essentially. So I really hope that once Apple gets some subscribers to their arcade subscription service, because that's clearly what they're trying to do with this tab, hopefully they'll remove it and put it back to the updates tab. The next thing that I hate about iOS 13 is 3D touch being phased out even on the newer iPhones. So even if you just bought an iPhone 10s Max, if you have an iPhone 10, if you have anything above the iPhone 6s, you're no longer gonna be able to use 3D touch like you have before. So you can see I have an iPhone 8 here and if I go ahead and press and hold on an icon, you can see that is now haptic touch. I can no longer use pressure and push down harder to invoke 3D touch because it doesn't exist anymore in iOS 13. Well, I shouldn't say it doesn't exist, but it may not exist in the future. Now you can still use it to as a trackpad here in iOS 13, which is great. So it still does exist. It's not completely phased out, but it's phased out for the most part. You can't peek and pop. You know, you can't do a lot of things like you used to be able to before. So why? I don't get it, Apple. Why wouldn't you just keep this here for devices that already have 3D touch? I mean, I don't mind the new iPhones not getting it. And you know, obviously they won't have it. They'll have haptic touch, but still keep it on the older iPhones. 3D touch on iOS 12 was just faster than haptic touch is on iOS 13. Also, you could just use your pressure, you know, from your finger and push down hard on an icon. You can peek and pop. You can do all that stuff on iOS 12 on the newer devices. But now of course with iOS 13, you can't. So not only is it slower, but you're also missing out on features that you used to be able to use in the past. So for instance, peek and pop, you're not able to peek and pop. Now you can peek, you can see by pressing it, but if you press it harder, it doesn't pop. You have to literally press on that little window there and then it pops into the window that you were looking for, which is much slower than how you used to be able to do it with 3D Touch where you can peek and then press harder and pop and it opens up right there just that quick. You don't have to press another button like you do now in iOS 13. Now, the next thing I don't understand is why auto brightness is still hidden away super deep inside of settings. So to get to it, you have to go to accessibility, display and text size, and then all the way at the bottom is display and brightness. Now, why Apple, why is this not inside of display and brightness right here on the front page of settings? I mean, we have things like night shift, we have like text size and bold text. If anything, bold text and things like that belong there in accessibility. So I don't get why auto brightness is still not inside of display and brightness. And you would think you would also be able to turn it on from somewhere inside of the control center, but no, there's no way to do that either. And the next one is one that you guys all know about. It's one that we've talked about a lot here on the channel and pretty much everybody else has talked about it, but the incoming call UI, Apple, why did you not change this with iOS 13? I mean, I'm glad that we got a dark mode. I'm really glad that we got a new volume HUD, but why would you neglect and just ignore the incoming call UI? This is so intrusive. It's so obtrusive. It takes up the whole screen. It just slows your workflow down if you don't want to ignore somebody, if you don't want them to know you're ignoring the call, but you're also in the middle of doing something on your phone. You have to sit there and wait for it to ring, and then you can eventually go back to what you were doing. It should be just a little bar at the top where you can swipe it, and you won't have to worry about it, and you can keep doing things in the background. So unfortunately, I don't think Apple's gonna be fixing this in iOS 13, but hopefully iOS 14, we finally get a new income call UI. Now, another thing that I'm confused as to why Apple didn't include this with iOS 13 are new control center toggles. Why do we have no new control center toggles in iOS 13? So if we go to our settings, control center, customize controls, 
there's absolutely nothing new down here. I think that we should at least have, you know, shortcuts to applications. Maybe we should be able to add our own shortcut to any application so that we can just go to the control center and press on one of these toggles and it will take us to that application. And what would make that even better is that if we could customize it to go into third party applications as well. So if we could just have like a little customize button here, like maybe at the very bottom that shows custom and then you could just choose an application and it will just put that applications icon here in the control center. You could tap on it and go to the application really quickly. Something like that should definitely be a feature in iOS 13, but at the very least, there should have been at least something new added to the control center. Now let's talk about the volume HUD. So why is this thing fat and big at the start? Why is it not this skinny bar all along? We shouldn't have this big control center looking volume right here at the beginning. I mean, it's not bad. Obviously it's way better than it was in the past, but still it should be the skinny bar here all along. I think that looks so much cleaner, so much more modern and so much less obtrusive than this big volume HUD right there that pops out. It's not really big compared to what we had, like I said, but still I wish it just stayed skinny the entire time. So the next one has to do with alarm. So why does this still not show how much sleep you will get if you went to bed at a certain time and woke up at a certain time. So if you went to bed now, it should show how many you know hours, how many minutes you will get of sleep instead of just showing nothing. It shows 7, 12 a.m. that I have to sit there and use my fingers and calculate how many hours of sleep I'm gonna get. I think everybody would agree that we need a little you know, spot right here that shows exactly how much sleep you will get. And it's not like Apple can't easily do this because if you go into the timer, you'll notice now in iOS 13, when you set a timer, it will show when the timer will go off. It actually shows the time that the timer will go off. So why could Apple not add that, something similar to that here inside of the alarm? I think that would be great. I think a lot of people would absolutely love that. And the next one has to do with the iPad and mouse and keyboard support. So mouse and keyboard should not be an accessibility feature. It works super good on iOS 13. This should be built in. There should be no setup needed. You shouldn't have to go through all these menus to get there and set up your mouse to be able to use it. I think that the mouse especially should not be an accessibility feature. It should be built in. You should be able to hook up your mouse, whether that be via Bluetooth or via you know a dongle and a USB or just USB-C. Whatever the mouse is, you should be able to just use it right away. You should be able to plug it in and use it and not have to sit there and set it up. And now the final one is inside of the camera. So why do we still not have settings inside of our camera. I mean, if we go to our control center here, and if we go ahead and press and hold haptic touch on the platter right there, and then if we haptic touch on Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, you can see that we get settings. We can actually choose what we want to connect to. And we also have this down here, Bluetooth settings. So why can't we do something like that inside of the camera? Get to the settings really easily from somewhere inside of the camera, whether that be in the top right, the top left, somewhere we should be able to access our settings for the camera application like the quality we're shooting in you know maybe hdr features like that we should be able to quickly access from within the camera application so yeah i really hope that apple changes or adds some of these things in later versions of ios 13 or maybe ios 14. so let me know what you guys think about this video do you agree with me do you disagree with me are there any other bad features or changes in ios 13 is there anything else you would like to see added let me know down in a comment below i like to keep this discussion alive i like to talk about things like this because i don't think apple's going to watch this video I guess it's possible, but I also want to just, you know, throw these ideas out there. I really hope that somebody at Apple sees this video and, you know, considers adding these things in there. I highly doubt that's going to happen, but it would be awesome. But anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Of course, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 13 content coming throughout the month and the coming months as well. So anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.